to one, the voice inside your head, Michael A. Singer. Shoot, I can't remember her name. What is her name? Here she comes. What is it? Uh, Sally? Or Sue? She told me yesterday, what is the matter with me? This is going to be embarrassing. In case you haven't noticed, you have a mental dialogue going on inside your head. That never stops. It just keeps going and going. Have you ever wondered why it talks in there? How does it decide what to say and when to say it? And how much of what it says turns out to be true? How much of what it says is even important? And if right now you're hearing, I don't have a voice inside my head. That's the voice that we're talking about. If you're smart, you'll take time to step back and examine the voice and get to know it better. The problem is, you're too close to be objective. You have to step back and watch it converse. And while you're driving and you hear internal conversation like, Wasn't I supposed to call Fred? I should have. Oh my God. I can't believe that I forgot. He's going to be so mad. He may never talk to me again. Maybe I should stop and call him right now. No, I don't want to stop the car right now. Notice how the voice takes both sides of the conversation. It doesn't care which side it takes just as long as it gets to keep on talking. And when you're tired and you're trying to sleep, the voice inside your head that says, what am I doing? I can't go to sleep yet. I forgot to call Fred. I remembered in the car, but I didn't call. If I don't call now, oh wait, it's too late. I shouldn't call him now. I don't even know why I thought about it. I need to fall asleep. Oh shoot. And now I can't fall asleep. I'm not tired anymore, but I have a big day tomorrow and I have to get up early. No wonder you can't sleep. Why do you even tolerate that voice talking to you all the time? Even if what it's saying is soothing and nice, it's still disturbing everything that you're doing. And if you spend some time observing this mental voice, the first thing that you will notice is that it never shuts up. When left on its own, it just talks. Imagine if you were to see someone walking around constantly talking himself. You'd think he was strange. And you'd wonder if he's the one that's talking and he's the one who's listening. He obviously knows what he's going to say before he says it. So what's the point? The same is true for the voice inside your head. Why is it talking? It's you who's talking and it's you who's listening. And when the voice argues with itself, who is it arguing with? Who could possibly win? It gets very confusing. I think I should get married. No, I'm not. You're not ready. You'll be sorry, but I love him. Oh, come on. You said the same about Tom. What if you'd married him? If you watch carefully, you'll see it's trying to find a comfortable place to rest. It will change sides in a moment if that seems to help. And it doesn't even quiet down when it finds out that it's wrong. It simply adjusts its viewpoint and keeps on going. And if you pay attention, these mental patterns will become obvious to you. It's actually a shocking realisation when you first notice that the mind is constantly talking. You might even try to yell at it in a feeble attempt to shut it up. But when you realise that the voice yelling at the voice. Shut up. I want to go to sleep. Why do you have to keep talking all the time? Obviously, you can't shut it up that way. The best way to free yourself from the innocent chatter is to step back to view it objectively. Just view the voice 
as a vocalizing mechanism that is capable of making it here like someone is in there talking to you. Don't think about it, just notice it. It doesn't matter because it's still just a voice talking inside your head. And in fact, the only way to get your distance from the voice is to stop differentiating what it is saying. Stop feeling that one thing it says to you and the other thing it says is not to you. If you're hearing it talk, it's obviously not you. You are the one who hears the voice. You are the one who notices, noticing that it's talking. You do hear it and it talks, don't you? Make it say hello. Make it say hello right now. Say it over and over again, a few times. Can you hear yourself saying hello inside? Of course you can. There is a voice talking and there is you who notices the voice talking. The problem is, is that it's easy to notice the voice saying hello. It is difficult to see that no matter what the voice says, it is still just a voice talking and you are listening. There's nothing that that voice can say that is more than it says. Suppose you were looking at three objects, a flower pot, a photograph and a book, and were then asked, which of these objects is you? say none of them I'm the one who's looking and you're the one that's putting it in front of me it doesn't matter what you put in front of me it's always going to be me looking at it you see it's an act of a subject perceiving various objects this is also true of hearing the voice inside it doesn't make any difference what it's saying you are the one who is aware of it as long as you think that one thing is saying is you but the other thing is saying, it's not you. You've lost your objectivity. You may want to think of yourself as the part that says the nice things, but that's still the voice talking. And you may like what it says, but it's not you. There's nothing more important to true growth than realizing that you are not the voice of the mind. And if you don't understand this, you'll try to figure out which the many things the voice says is really you. People go through so many changes in the name of trying to find themselves, which of these aspects of their personality is who they really are. And the answer is simply none of them. And if you watch it objectively, you'll come to see much of what the voice says is meaningless. Most of the talking is just a waste of time and energy. And the truth is that most of life will unfold in accordance with forces far outside your control, regardless of what your mind says about it. It's like sitting down at night and deciding whether you want to see the sun coming up in the morning. The bottom line is the sun will come up and the sun will go down and billions of things are going on in the world. You can think about it all you want, but life is still going to keep on happening. In fact, your thoughts have far less impact on the world than you would like to think. And if you're willing to be objective and watch your thoughts, you will see the vast majority of them have no relevance. They have no effect on anything or anybody except you. They are simply making you feel better or worse about past or what might go on in the future. And if you spend time hoping that it doesn't rain tomorrow, you're wasting your time. You will someday come to see there is no use for that innocent internal chatter. And there is no reason to constantly attempt to figure everything out. Eventually, you will see your cause of problems. And it's not life itself. It's the commotion the mind makes about life that really causes problems. Now, this raises a serious question. If so much of what the voice says is meaningless and unnecessary, why does it even exist? And the secret to answering this question lies in understanding what it says and when it says it. For example, in some cases, the mental voice talks for the same reason that a tea kettle whistles. That is, 
there is a build-up of energy inside that needs to be released. And if you watch objectively, you will see there's a build-up of nervous, fearful or desire-based energy inside. And the voice becomes extremely active. This is easy to see when you are angry with someone and you feel like telling them off. Um, just watch how many times the inner voice tells them off before you even see them. You want to do something about it. That voice talks because you're not okay inside and talking releases energy. You will notice, however, that even when you're not particularly bothered by something, it still talks. And when you're walking down the street, it says things like, look at that dog, it's a Labrador. Hey, there's another dog in that car. He looks like my first dog, Shadow. Wow, there's an old, old mobile. It's got Alaska plates and you don't see many of these down here. It is actually narrating the world for you. Why do we need this? You already see what's happening outside. How does it help to repeat to yourself through the mental voice? You should examine this very closely and with a simple glance, you instantly take in a tremendous detail of whatever you're looking at. And if you see a tree, you effortlessly see branches, the leaves and the flowering buds. Why then do you have to verbalize what you have already seen? Look at the dogwood. The green leaves are so beautiful against the white flowers. Look how many flowers there are. Wow, it's so full. What you'll see is if you study this carefully, it is the narration makes you feel more comfortable in the world around you. Like backseat driving, it makes you feel as those things are more in your control. You actually feel a tree no longer is just a tree in the world that has nothing to do with you. It is a tree that you saw, labelled and judged by verbalising it mentally. You brought that initial direct experience of the world into the realm of your thoughts. There it becomes integrated with your other thoughts, such as those making up your value system and historical experiences. Take a moment to examine the difference between the experience of the outside world and the interactions with the mental world. And when you're just thinking, you're free to create whatever thoughts that you want in mind. And these thoughts are expressed through the voice. You are very accustomed to settling in the playground of the mind, create and manipulating thoughts. The inner world is an alternative environment that is under your control. Our outside world, however, marches on its own laws. And when the voice narrates the outside world to you, those thoughts are now side by side in parity with all your other thoughts. All these thoughts intermix and actually influence your experience of the world around you. What you end up experiencing is really a personal presentation of the world according to you, rather than the stark, unfiltered experience of what is really out there. What you end up experiencing is really a personal presentation of the world according to you, rather than the stark, unfiltered experience of what is really out there. This mental manipulation of the outer experience allows you to buffer reality as it comes in. For example, there are myriad things that you see at any given time. The ones you discuss in your mind are the ones that matter to you. And with this subtle form of processing, you manage to control the experience of reality so that it all fits together inside your mind. Your consciousness is actually experiencing your mental model of reality, not reality itself. You have to watch this very carefully because you do it all the time. You're walking outside in the winter, you start to shiver and the voice says, it's cold. Now, how did that help you? You already knew it was cold. You're the one who's experiencing the cold. Why is it telling you this? You recreate the within your mind because you can control your mind, whereas you can't control the world. And that is why you mentally talk about it. And if you can't get the world the way you like it, you internally verbalize it, judge it, complain about it, and then decide to do nothing about it. 
this makes you feel more empowered. And when your body experiences cold, there may be nothing that you can do to affect the temperature when your mind verbalizes it's cold. You can say, we're almost home, just a few more minutes, and now you'll feel better. In the thought world, there's always something that you can do. Control the experience. Basically, you recreate the, the outside world inside yourself, and then you live in your mind. And when you decided not to do this, if you decide to narrow and instead you constantly observe the world, you will feel more open and exposed. And this is because you really don't know what will happen next. Your mind is accustomed to helping you. It does this by processing your current experience in the way that makes them fit with your views of the past and visions of the future. All of this helps you create a semblance of control. And if your mind doesn't, you simply become too uncomfortable. Reality is just too real for most of us. So we temper it with the mind. And you will come to see that the mind talks all the time because it gave you a job to do. You use it as a protection mechanism, a form of defense. Ultimately, it makes you feel more secure. As long as that's what you want, you will be forced to constantly use your mind to buffer yourself from life instead of living it. This world is unfolding and really has little to do with you and your thoughts. It's here long before you came and it will be here long after you leave. And in the name of attempting to hold the world together, you're really just trying to hold yourself together. True personal growth is about transcending the part of you that is not okay and needs protection. This is done by constantly remembering that you are the one inside that notices the voice talking. And that is the way out. That is why the one inside who is aware that you are always talking to yourself about yourself is always silent. It is the doorway to the depths of your being to be aware that you are watching the voice talk of a fantastic inner journey. If you use properly, the same mental voice has been the source of worry, distraction and general neurosis. Know the one who watches the voice, you will come to know of one of the great mysteries of creation. Chapter 2, Your Inner Roommate.